Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and this is a spacecraft in Space Engine accelerating toward Earth. In today's video we're going to explore the idea of a spacecraft accidentally or possibly on purpose colliding with our planet Earth very very close at to the speed of light. Now what would happen? Well, let's find out and welcome to What The Math. Well, it looks like I might not be uh, successful at getting that speed of light in Space Engine because my spacecraft just didn't really have enough acceleration. We'll be moving at a speed close to about 1500 kilometers per second and we'll be passing by Earth possibly on its edge, but we might also collide with it as well. So let's actually see what happens as we gently pass very, very close to our planet at a ridiculously high speed. Now in this game there is actually no collisions, so even if we collided with it, nothing will really happen. Oh wow, this is really close, very very beautiful. But um, we're going to go to Universe Sandbox and explore this idea more scientifically, more mathematically, and talk about a hypothetical scenario of this actually happening and a spacecraft actually colliding with our planet Earth. So let's switch games here. And begin a new Earth simulation where we just have Earth and Moon, nothing else. So let's do a little bit of simulation in here and let's uh, find out a, a nice craft for us to launch. So in this game, there's actually um, a few objects that are kind of interesting, but I wanted to hypothetically launch an actual spacecraft, like for example, Voyager 1 or Voyager 2. These, uh, both of these left our planet Earth several decades ago. And so maybe just maybe hypothetically, some kind of an alien civilization decides to basically bounce them back to us and have them accelerate dramatically fast toward our planet, just because, you know, they might want to see what happens if a spacecraft collides with another planet at the speed of light, or close to the speed of light. Now, first of all, you cannot actually travel at the speed of light if you have any mass. Unless you are light, which doesn't have any mass, you can't really ever reach the speed of light. No matter how hard you try, cl the closer and closer you get to the speed of light, due to the relativistic effects, your actual mass will start increasing so much that it's going to be harder and harder to get that necessary speed. So you will actually require more and more energy uh, that will increase dramatically the closer to the speed of light you get. So we can only get to like maybe 9, 9.999999 of speed of light, but never really to the speed of light itself. So let's start with something a little bit less dramatic than that. So we're going to start with 90% of the speed of light. And uh, here, if I were to basically just launch like a, like a ball, for example, and I just say we're, gonna, we're just going to launch this bowling ball that's about 7 kilograms. But for the ease of calculation, we're also going to decrease its mass a little bit. I'm going to make it just a little bit lighter. It's going to be about 5 kilograms. And so here, this ball will be traveling toward our planet Earth ridiculously fast. Boom. And look at that. It created a very big explosion. As a matter of fact, this explosion is close to about 150 megaton um, upon collision, and this is about twice as powerful as the infamous Tsar Bomba, which is which was the most powerful nuclear explosion ever developed by humans. It was actually dropped by the Russians just as a kind of a show of force uh, a long time ago, several decades ago. Now, this particular explosion was maybe a little bit more powerful than it should have been, uh, but as you can see, it does create a humongous explosion upon collision. So, this also means that we need to figure out why is it so powerful. So the idea here is that the faster you move, the more energy you get. This is uh, the infamous Newtonian equation of half mv square. You may have done this in your physics class, but the thing is, it doesn't really work um, at higher speeds, at higher velocities, and you have to use a Newtonian, or sorry, not Newtonian, but Einsteinian version of that equation. So if I were to launch a ball, at a speed close to the speed of light, the equation would change to omega minus one times mc square. Now, mc square you may have heard of before, that's the uh, famous formula from Einstein, but omega is something called Lorentz um, factor. Lorentz factor is basically uh, a number, it's, it's a number that can be found by taking a square root of one minus v square divided by c square and v square is the actual speed c square is the speed of light um, so using this Lorentz factor we can actually discover the total energy 
produced by an object that moves at ridiculously high speeds. And this this concept, as I, you can kind of see me creating here by launching uh, tons and tons of different really fast moving balls, is actually called um, relativistic kill uh, vehicle. Relativistic kill vehicle is a kind of a science fiction concept where you can basically launch an object moving ridiculously fast at a planet or at a, a very big spaceship. And uh, this particular object would be able to destroy something because of the relativistic effects. Now, um, by traveling near the speed of light, the so-called RKKV, our, our relativistic kill vehicle, could substantially basically limit um, the early detection system. Because, you know, it's moving at this close to the speed of light. By the time you see it, it's going to be too late. Because it's moving at the speed of light and you can only detect it at the speed of light. Or it's moving close to the speed of light. It's also very difficult to destroy it. Or even if you do destroy, like if I were to launch it and then you were to basically explode it or destroy it into little pieces, you would instead have, instead have little pieces flying toward you at the speed of light. That would be just as bad as the actual object. So it's just it would just be tiny particles that would then... Okay, this one just kind of passed through the planet. That's not good. Uh, it would be just tiny particles moving at, at, at the speed of light and creating just as much energy. On the other hand, if you were to try to move it away from the uh, projector it's going at, it would be also very difficult because it's, the energy of this object is so high that it would be almost impossible to move it away from this trajectory. So it would almost instantly or almost certainly um, collide with the intended target. And in a lot of science fiction books that, that use this concept, uh, usually these objects accelerate using some sort of a um, huge accelerating gun. Or in our reality, in our world, we actually already have a technology for this. We could use the uh, same lasers that were proposed to launch the uh, tiny, tiny satellites to the nearest star to us, Proxima Centauri. And using these lasers, we can actually accelerate objects to the speed of about 20% um, of the speed of light at least, and possibly even higher. So it's definitely possible. Now, this was actually at the speed of about, what, 90% uh, of the speed of light. Let's go a little bit higher. So let's actually start a new simulation. And then let's uh, pick uh, the actual Voyager craft. And we're going to launch it at, um, I don't know, something like 0.9999 speed of light. So slightly more higher than what we used to have. And so here comes our Voyager craft. We're going to launch it toward our planet Earth. It's going to be coming from far, far away. And we're going to basically just follow it on its trajectory. And this is actually in slow motion as well. I, I decelerate time a little bit just so we can actually see it in more detail. So this is the Voyager 1 craft that was launched back in the, in the 70s. So, uh, currently it's moving at 0.999 speed of light. It is sort of projected as 1 because the game uh, doesn't really like big decimals. Uh, but basically the energy here that will be produced is uh, close to about um, 1 followed by about 22 zeros joules, which is equivalent to close to 2 million megatons or like 30,000 Tsar Bombas. So... It's going to be equivalent to 30,000 of those most powerful nuclear bombs that we ever produced and exploded. Let's see how big of an explosion this creates. This is a craft that's about 800, what is it, 826 kilograms, moving at um, very close to the speed of light. This is once again in slow motion, so in reality it will be a lot faster. As a matter of fact, close to like 10 times faster than you see right now, and boom! And so here is the explosion off the coast of Florida. Let's see how big it is. Let's see what happens to our planet Earth. And I'm going to accelerate time just a little bit and look at that. It basically destroys most of the East Coast of the United States. It destroys Mexico. It destroys the Caribbean, Central America. And it approaches, uh, or I guess kind of touches some of the South America as well. This explosion is bigger than, you know, anything that would be created by any asteroid, bigger than the one that killed the dinosaurs. So this is a huge explosion. Look at the size of that crater. Ridiculously big crater. It's close to about, you know, a thousand kilometers in diameter. So this is a pretty powerful explosion. All right, so well, that's just from one spacecraft. That's just a craft that collided with our planet. How about, you know, how about we take a tiny rock, like a tiny asteroid? 
Let's look at it. what would happen if a tiny asteroid, like the tiniest one we have, one of the smallest we can we can find, like this one here, 2014 RC. This is a small, very small asteroid in comparison to some of the larger ones. It's only about 10 meters in diameter. What would this do to our planet? Let's let's launch, launch this and let's find out. So here we go, and I'm going to, need to decelerate time just a little bit more, and boom. Okay. It collided with the central North America, Midwest, and it created uh, an explosion again. Let's accelerate time, and let's find out if this does more damage. And look at that. It basically takes a huge chunk of North America. All right, so that was maybe a little bit more powerful because the mass was um, not as high um, as some of the other asteroids. But if I were to take a, a larger asteroid, like for example, but if I were to take a larger rock, like for example, Halley's Comet, um, that does have a dramatically larger size of five kilometers and a dramatically larger mass, that would change a lot of things. That would actually make this a relativistic key vehicle that would destroy planets. So let's find out how bad things will get if we have a Halley's Comet that aliens decide to launch the rest at this particular speed. And so here we go, at slightly uh, decreased speed here, and once again aiming it at North America, hitting what seems to be, wow, there's a big chunk that just came off our planet. That was unexpected. This was basically the uh, E equals M2 square in action. It, energy produced by the, by the explosion created a humongous amount of mass. And look at this. Look at this explosion. Look at how powerful, how tremendously powerful this explosion is. Within like literally minutes, the entire planet is covered in what seems to be a shockwave. And essentially everyone's dead. Yep, everybody is dead. There's, there's no way anyone would survive this. Absolutely no way. So, that's the natural and the idea and the math behind relativistic kill vehicles often used in various science fiction movies, or books. Uh, but in reality, this would be very, very difficult to reproduce because um, accelerating things to such a high velocity would require a dramatically powerful weapon, a dramatically powerful um, acceleration device that we don't actually just have, except for those lasers that I mentioned earlier, but even they would not have enough power to, to be able to produce anything um, as powerful as this and to accelerate things to such a velocity. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to mention in this video and in one of the future videos we might explore some more um, relativistic effects and relativistic weapons or relativistic crafts that uh, have been mentioned in various science fiction movies and books. But for now, that's it. Come back tomorrow to learn something else and hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share this video and come back tomorrow to watch another one. I'll see you guys later. Space out, and as always, bye bye. Well, Earth, I seem to have destroyed you quite enough today, so you know what? Goodbye. I'm just going to explode you because you kind of have been destroyed completely. Space out, guys. Bye bye.